When you're swimming down the river and the landscape is unfolding before you, you can come across things that defy logic. A wave at times both terrifying and exciting, that it consumes every thought. A wave that you have to get back to, to ride just one more time. John and I are going to do our trip down to Dry Normica today. I think it's about an eight kilometers down and then an eight kilometers hike back up. Which is not so bad, but the woods up here are super thick, so it's really hard to say how long it's going to take us to get back. Molly just kind of came in prime for the kayakers, so there's lots of kayakers here. So I'm going to just try getting a couple party surfs with Benny before I head down. Younger, he came across this wave downstream of Molly. We were running the section, we ran it for about a week. We found this wave. And it was a crazy feature. It was just very fast through this one channel and it would just shoot straight up. This big green wall of water. We couldn't surf it. It was so unique. We would just run up and paddle down, run up, paddle down, run up, paddle down. It's just a really beautiful feature to kayak over. At the time they were calling this wave Ginormica. But a wave can't properly be named until it's had its first rider. Judging by Benny's description of this smooth, glassy beast, I thought, maybe this is the wave that we've been looking for. For years we've been driving the old logging roads on both sides of the river to try finding this wave. And every year we have been unsuccessful. When we saw the river level was dropping, we decided that today would be the day that we finally get our eyes on this feature. I had a hard time justifying going all the way down river and then hiking all the way back up for something that I didn't see a lot of potential in. It was not, I don't think I was super excited about it. I mean, Molly was in. There's a bear on the far shore over there. Something about that feeling when you come around a corner, you hear this giant roar from downstream and the horizon line and all you see is some mist spraying in the distance. It gets my heart going. We've been calling this rapid the L Rapid because of its 90 degree turn at the bottom. Okay, we made it to the L Rapid. Um, pretty burly, we're not gonna run it. We're just gonna go down from here. Pretty intense. Benny had told us that there was a significant hole directly behind the wave. I won't lie, this has been swirling around in my head. What if there is a perfect wave, but I'm too scared to ride it? It's a weird feeling because the further downstream you go, the longer the hike is going to be to get back.
Is that what your feelings are too, John? Yeah, like that. 100 meter portage of El Rapid took us like 15 minutes, so hopefully we move faster than that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hopefully we can find some logging roads on the way back. So we're not like trudging through this dense forest. You can finally hear the rapid. Potentially it's the biggest wave we've seen. Well, I don't think we have a glassy wave. Let's go ahead and take a look. We didn't find the wave that we were looking for, but this place, this place felt special. Some waves only show their face with very specific water levels. In order to find a really good river wave, you either have to be really lucky or willing to put in a lot of work. Who knows what kind of waves could still be out there? Rapids that have never been seen at the precise water level to reveal its true magic. So, found this old logging road. It's really old. But at least it's easier than trudging through the dense woods. It was like, to get to this road was super, super tight. Couldn't even fit between the trees. So, I mean, I'm glad we found this road, but still got a long journey ahead of us. Uh, 2.30, we were about to skip out below El Rapid. 3.30, we got to the rapid we were hoping to get to. Yeah. Four o'clock, we started heading across. 4.25, I think we made it to this road. And then we just made it to the T at 4.50. Yeah, okay. Don't exactly know where we are, but we're somewhere between the, the, the island and the El Rapid. We're still walking in the right direction. So our choice is either to go up this road, away from the river, or through that, towards the river. There's always this debate. Do we hike in our wetsuits and overheat? Or do we take the wetsuits off and get eaten by the bugs? Sorry, I gave you the bag just in time for the hill. This area just looked so comfy. All right. Now we just go towards the sound. Uh, I'll leave a little something there. So you can see the rapid below the L rapid, but a uh, ways to go still. Here's the bear tracks from earlier. We can see Molly Bridge off in the distance. We did it. <laughs> Even if we did find a really beautiful wave on this trip, we wouldn't have been able to properly session it with the daylight that we had.
We did that whole journey and there was no, no epic wave, but whatever. I can't really complain. Still an epic wave right here. And I still have a couple more days up on this river. So I'm so gonna take advantage of that. Hopefully I'm not too sore tomorrow. Pretty exhausted though, that was a long trek. So it had been raining and shitty this whole week that we we're just tearing apart this section. And I made a silly error when my girlfriend at the time said, what are you going to do tomorrow? And I was like, uh, hang out with you, I guess. I mean, hang out with you, of course. That's what I want to do, obviously. Which it wasn't. I wanted to go kayaking. And it was the first sunny day. Patrick named the wave Ginormica, which was a huge party foul from my perspective. But Patrick also took two photos, one of Casper running the Big Rapid, which I'd run first the day before in shitty light, and a picture of Casper kind of riding the wall of water, uh, which became the cover of Kayak Session and a two-page spread in Kayak Session. And this was a time where I really cared about getting exposure so it hurt and they took a, a name ginormica that i was saving for a wave worthy of that name and plastered it all over this thing so it was a bad day for benny mar We decided to drive down to a different section of the river, downstream of Molly Bridge in our elusive perfect wave, to a place we call Hawaii. Hawaii is a big wave mecca. No other rapid houses such a stacked lineup of extra large waves. We arrived just in time to watch Benny launch off the Hawaii curler. All right, new day, top of Hawaii. Ready for a rip down. Yeah, no real plan, just gonna have some fun. I really like this float down. I really appreciate it. It's almost like meditation. It's really intimidating rolling up to a rapid of this scale. We are so low to the water, we are basically entering into it blind, relying on our mental map from previous swims down to guide us. At the top of Hawaii, there is a really nice wave called Suzanne Murphy that we use as a landmark. As long as we flush off the right side of this wave, we are in a good position to navigate the rapids safely. On this day, John may be nervous when he wanted to throw a body burial. It's really not a good place to lose a board. Combined sequence of cutting it close to Hawaii Curler, launching off the giant waves, and then swimming through the chaos at the bottom. It's really a sensation that cannot be matched. Didn't think I was gonna make it that time. <laughs> that was really close. Whew. Here's John's first black math attempt. Kind of curious how this is gonna go. I can tell that he's a little bit unsure. I don't think it's gonna work. It's gonna work. Believe in yourself.
Benny has been surfing black mass for years. His comfort on this wave is evident. Although John did catch a couple surfs, including this one where he almost lost his flipper, he was not enjoying it like Benny and I. He set his sights on another feature just upstream, which was thought to be unsurfable. It was inspiring watching John catch his first surf on this monster of a wave. The wave was then dubbed Pineapple Express. That worked out better than I thought. Land on his back, but it still looked pretty cool. And then I went through the crazy shit at the bottom. Yeah, this rapid, there's no feeling like it. <sighs> so we just had an epic session at Hawaii. All in all, it was a freaking awesome day. We just got um, uh, the fire prepped, the food prepped, everything's prepped, the sun is going down. But we're gonna go for one last session. Alright, so John's on Molly. I'm gonna see if I can get a shot of him fun flipping from here. Molly was once my perfect wave, with almost no downriver consequence, taking on so many different shapes. It's truly a perfect playground, a stunting paradise. I think the black flies are out. Just maybe. Well, we're packing up the car. We're about to leave Molly. Didn't even use this board on this trip. Good thing we brought it. Good thing we brought it. Bye, Molly. Pear, apple.
about that one. And Pineapple Express. Yeah. And Suzanne Murphy. Last minute, we decided to go on a exploration mission to figure out where Benny is. Uh, he kind of gave us a little description, and he said he's going to camp out at Ginormica. Um, so hopefully, we can get there using this road. Hopefully, there's a dope wave at the end of this road. Anyways. Uh, we kind of started this adventure really late, so it might might have been a. Uh, we should have just shouldn't have spent so much time with Molly. So last day of our stakeout, last day of our wave hunt. We have one final chance to, to check out Ginormica. Then he had said that he found a way in. Hope the wave is good. It's been many years of searching for this wave at different water levels and trying to find the perfect timing and the perfect route to get to this wave. So I'm really hoping that this is the day, the day that we can actually see this wave. Um, it'll be a nice finish to this trip. I am cautiously optimistic. So I went there, just set up camp, parked, and figured out that there's perfect water level for this wave. The wave has three surfing zones, all accessible by riverboard. Two of the surf zones are really good for tidal. Wedge and the surfer's left, river right feature is actually spectacular. I did not see Cheese Wave as being the big beautiful thing it is. I did not think there was potential for there to be a wave that looks like this. Is this the perfect wave? It kind of seems like it. Will this wave allow me to do things that I've only ever dreamed of? Like landing a true front flip? A front flip back onto the knees? I always knew I wanted to name this like perfect wave cheese wave and this is kind of the one. There was a few other name ideas but it's cheese wave. And I did finally name a wave Ginormica just downstream on the same river. So that's, a, that's about it for the names. I've never surfed a wave like this before. It's truly a freak of nature. I always just thought when I found the perfect wave, I would just be able to throw a very big front flip and have it come around. Now I know that a wave this unique has a learning curve unlike any other wave. The road to the true front flip has only just begun. John landed a front flip, which was sick. I was like white knuckling it the whole time. <laughs> yeah. My hands are like, are so tired from just squeezing my board as tight as I can go. I just was not wanting to go in there. The reason why I called it Cheese Wave is because I had a dream once that I was surfing, about to surf a wave made out of cheese. I looked over my shoulder. God, that's a perfect wave. And I was paddling and I looked back over like, oh shit, it's made out of molten cheese. <laughs>